Hi everyone, welcome to Brooks River in Katmai National Park, Alaska. Best place in the world to watch brown bears fishing for salmon and learn about their behaviors and their e uh, biology and ecology. My name is Mike Fitz with explore.org and the resident naturalist with explore.org. And to help us talk about the brown bears and salmon that we're seeing live today, I'm joined by Katmai National Park Ranger, Felicia Jimenez. Felicia, how are you doing today? I know it's, um, it looks like a, another dreary day in Katmai, but that seems to be par for the course, especially in the summer. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, I'm doing well. Um, sorry if you can hear um, any kind of radio traffic behind me. I'm doing this from a different location, trying to get out of the rain today. Um, but there was a nice little weather window for about an hour, and then the clouds rolled in very quickly. So <laughs> doesn't matter to the bears, though. I think in some parts of Alaska, they call that a sucker hole because you get suckered into thinking that the weather's going to turn for the better and then it doesn't. Like you take, it's just enough time to take your rain clothes off and then, <laughs> and then it starts raining on you again. <laughs> That's exactly it. Like, I'm like, oh, this is so nice. Better take off my raincoat. Then I get out to the bridge and I'm like, oh, okay, I got to go get it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be, uh, you know, it, as you can see on the cameras right now, uh, the bears don't really mind the rain. They're going to be in the water wet, no matter the weather, looking for uh, salmon as they prepare for winter hibernation. So we're going to talk about the behavior of the bears today, identify some of the bears that we're seeing, including that bear on the far wall there, uh, back up against the edge of the falls. That is number 480 Otis. We have uh, the Brooks, main Brooks Falls camera to look at. We also have the Falls Low camera to watch. We'll be going down river. Um, to our river watch camera with some amazingly beautiful views today of bear scavenging salmon. Uh, also our cat's river view camera uh, views there. If uh, the salmon seem to be hanging out right in front of our underwater camera, we'll look there as well. Dumpling Mountain today looks pretty dreary, so we might not be going up there, but that's an option as well. I know we always have a few new people joining the broadcast. Uh, so welcome to the new viewers and also welcome back to all of our longtime fans who are, uh, join us for every play by play. Uh, but if you are new to the broadcast, let's take a quick tour to show you where Brooks River is and where the webcams are located. Brooks River in Katmai National Park is located about 300 miles southwest of Anchorage, Alaska. And Brooks River itself is pretty short. It's only about a mile and a half long and it is bisected by Brooks Falls. In this view, in this imagery here, the river flows from generally from left to right. And along with our webcam partner, the National Park Service, Explore.org hosts and maintains several webcams at Brooks River. The webcam signal is either sent directly to a satellite uplink, or it's bounced off the top of that mountain, Dumpling Mountain, off of a couple of radio repeaters, and then to, to the small town of King Salmon, about 30, miles away where the park headquarters are located. To uh, give you a better understanding of where specifically those cameras are at, let's take a look at this right now. So we got the Brooks Falls camera on the left and then other cameras uh, downstream. Uh, so we'll uh, highlight each one of those real quick here. Brooks Falls camera, again, on the left-hand side of, this, uh, of the image. Uh, the, the camera itself will mostly be looking right in front of it at Brooks Falls, but occasionally it might turn downstream to look for bears uh, down a river. I think our Riffles camera is live today. I forgot to check actually, but um, I'll do that in just a moment. Riffles camera located about 100 yards downstream of Brooks Falls and looks up towards the falls. Then our River Watch camera is uh, located at the bridge. It looks upstream from the bridge, gives us a wide view of the lower Brooks River area. We have the underwater camera attached to one of the pilings on the bridge, and that is looking downstream at salmon and bears and whatever else happens to swim by. Cat's Riverview camera, named after our longtime camera operator, came up Cat. Uh, it looks out towards the river mouth. Really beautiful view there. And with all of these cameras combined, like Captain Planet, we have amazing powers to see much of the uh, lower half of Brooks River. We're also going to try to answer some audience questions. During the broadcast, these were submitted in advance through Ask Your Bear Cam Question. You can find a link to that in the featured comment if you're watching on Explore org right now or if you're watching live on youtube for example uh, ask a moderator for the link to that uh, we're going to try to get to some audience questions submitted in advance uh in the near future All, one final note is that uh, we're also looking to invite teachers to take fat bear week into their classroom information about that is also in the featured comment 
below the live camera feed on explore.org. Uh, but with all that being said, uh, Felicia, um, let's take a look, I guess maybe start at Brooks Falls since we have one of the more venerable bears and, and recognizable bears at the river uh, on the far wall there, number 480 uh, Otis. And a lot of people were wondering where he was uh, over the past mm -hmm. A uh, couple of weeks or so, um, he was here until like I think the twenty second of August, and then he disappeared, and he just came back a few days ago. How's he look to you? Uh, have you had the opportunity to see him in person since he's come back? I haven't seen him in person just because um, I've been like trapped because of the weather. But he looks really good from what I can see on the cameras. Um, you know, he's been gone on like one of his walkabouts, but wherever he's been eating, um, he's been eating really well, and he looks really good. Yeah, notice you can recognize him by his uh, floppy right ear. It just sort of hangs down a little bit lower than uh, his his left ear. But uh, Felicia, it's always interesting that um, Otis's floppy ear is less floppy in the fall. It's almost like you know, as he gains body mass, like the fat sort of bulges and pushes that ear more upright. I don't know if you've noticed that uh, before. <laughs> no, I think I have noticed that. <laughs> I think that's probably what's going on. Like, there's probably some cartilage damage. Yeah, that's what I suspect as well. It's just oh. um, cartilage damage there to his ear. And maybe that's one reason why it just sort of falls over. Bears get that uh, from time to time. I f Often, sometimes they get it in fights. I know 747, it seems like he can really can't maneuver his ears anymore at all. And I think that's probably because... Uh, of broken cartilage in um, in both of those ears. There's another uh, adult male standing on the far side of Brooks Falls near the boulder. Um, you know, his butt isn't quite recognizable enough for me to uh, be confident in an ID of that bear uh, right now. Uh, but we also have, it looks like maybe an adult female. This could be 909 on the right-hand side of the image. So a mix of bears using Brooks Falls at this time of the year. Uh, but Felicia, you know, we can see bears easily at Brooks Falls right now, but this isn't where most of the bears are concentrated. Uh, yeah, this is actually one of my favorite times of the year because I'm actually surprised that there are this many bears at the falls right now um, because in the fall, they start to concentrate in the lower river area. Um, as the salmon have spawned, their carcasses start washing up um, because they are at the end of their life cycle. So bears are gonna congregate in this lower part of the river right here that we're seeing right now on the River Watch and the Cats Riverview camera. Um, there's so many right now and they go where the fish are. Um, so this is where all the bears are. This looks like a family group that we have, uh, thanks to our camera operators who are helping us uh, look for bears. So I'm not driving the cameras, Felicia's not driving the cameras. Today we have Cam Up Bitsy and Cam Up Snow helping us out. I should give a shout out to our specific camera operators more often. Uh, and I haven't done that in the past. So I apologize to our camera operators, but it looks like we have a mother bear uh, with two cubs. Uh, I wasn't able to really get a great look at them before they went into the water. So I'm unsure if these are spring cubs or yearlings. Sometimes first year cubs or the spring cubs, they like to hang out uh, on the shoreline and maybe not follow mom into the water, but they get hungry too. Um, and some of them don't like to be separated from mother, so they'll try to follow mom out into the lake itself. Uh, but this it can be tough swimming sometimes for for the for the younger cubs. Felicia, the the mother bear though, when she's out in the water, how how would her fishing technique here differ compared to maybe what you find uh, bears doing at Brooks Falls? Um, so mom is all the way out in the lake right now. She's pretty deep in there. Um, and that's when you'll see more diving bears as opposed to bears like at the falls where they might be doing a more dash and grab method because the water is so shallow. Um, but she's out there like looking for the schools of salmon that are swimming right now. And yeah, sometimes if you get lucky, you'll see their little feet pop up at the top. <laughs> yeah, this is just an opportunity for, uh, for the bears to, to catch things that can't swim away. So the river mouth is just the spot where the, the current 
uh, dies essentially as it, the water starts to mix in the lake itself. So anything that's caught in the current really can't be carried very far out to the lake, especially if it's heavy, maybe like a salmon carcass, for instance. So a lot of salmon will drift downstream and die in this area. So it's a, it's a pretty lucrative fishing spot at this this time of the year. It's actually, uh, when you compare the amount of time that bears spend fishing and catch rates, when you look at those numbers versus what bears are doing up at Brooks Falls, bears can actually catch more fish in the lower river area at this time of the year compared to Brooks Falls, which is kind of like the opposite of what happens early in summer. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even like I see, I've seen, especially in the last like couple of days, a lot of bears walking along the beach, which you can't see on the cameras. Um, but that also makes sense because if these fish are dying, um, they're washing up in the mouth of the river, their carcasses might get swept um, to the beach. And that's just easy pickings for especially these family groups that like to walk up and down the beach. Yeah, I remember sometimes seeing on, um, on days when the wind is blowing, blowing out of the east. Uh, towards uh, towards Brooks Camp, so uh, basically kind of like towards the camera. Uh, and we can't see like the visitor center area or the lodge area on the camera, but uh, sometimes those big waves blow a lot of salmon carcasses right to the beach itself. And sometimes bears will be like fishing in front of the visitor center uh, looking for those salmon carcasses versus like out in the river mouth on those, those windy days. So sometimes on windy days, you know, uh, the bears are still out there fishing, maybe just in different locations, depending on where they think they can find food. Yeah, um, we were actually just right before, um, you know, we started the uh, the play-by-play. -play. Um, that actually happened. Um, 901 and family were walking on the beach and there were just some like dead fish carcasses that were on the beach. And um mom went up and was swimming in the lake for a little bit, grabbed some carcasses, but the babies found the carcasses like on the beach. And then one found one in the woods behind the visitor center. And they were just putting on a show um, as we could watch from the visitor center. It was really cute. That's one of those amazing things that can happen at Brooks camp where you can, you can be in the visitor center for instance, and there would be a bear right out the window. Uh, so that is uh, I, that I I don't know if it's a common experience, but I yeah I guess I could say it's probably a pretty common experience to find bears right out the visitor center at Brooks Camp. So if you have the opportunity to visit in person, it's a pretty amazing experience. But bears are everywhere. There is no bear free spot at Brooks Camp except hopefully in inside of uh, the buildings. <laughs> Please, yeah. Um, it's been pretty common. It was at least really common for me last year um, when I was like an interpretation ranger in the field. Um, when I would give my bear orientations, the bear orientation room, if you've never been in that, is surrounded by windows on like both sides. Um, and bears would frequently walk up the woods in between, you know, the beach and the visitor center. And these are people fresh off the plane. They're like, I'm, I'm here, I'm here for my bear school. And like, I'd open up and be like, all right, welcome to Katmai. <laughs> There's a lot of bears everywhere in camp. And then a bear would walk and cut through it's like right next to the window and everyone would get up and like, look, I'm like, and this is why you're in bear school. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, that gets uh, people's attention um, pretty pretty quickly uh, when that happens. So you're like, yeah, we're not kidding here, folks. There are definitely bears everywhere. Uh, and yeah, great views on the lower river cameras right now. I think we'll cut back to um, these in just a minute. Um, I don't want to miss this opportunity, though, for this close up of number 480 Otis, who's in the office, what we call his office on that far side there. Again, you can see his uh, floppy right ear. That's fairly characteristic of him. He also has in the fall, he has that light pat that blonde patch of fur on his right shoulder there are other bears with blonder patches of fur uh, but not quite in the same pattern as what you find otis uh sporting right there um and that this does i think give us an opportunity uh felicia to answer um a viewer question about otis because a lot of people had wondered mm -hmm. where he has been um, over the past mm -hmm. few weeks. Again, he just came back uh, recently, just within the last few days, I think maybe um, this past mm -hmm. weekend. And he's one of the older bears that we know of at Brooks River. 
he's not the oldest, but he's in his uh, mm -hmm. mid to to late twenties. We're not exactly show, sure how old he is, but a lot of people love his work ethic, his patience. Um, they they admire him for his adaptability. Uh, so when he disappeared, a lot of people were curious about that. So do we have any idea where Otis was when he was not at the river? Um, yeah, so, you know, we definitely don't track the bears, but um, we get good ideas of like what bears would look for in this time of year. Um, you know, if, if you think about the salmon migration, right, the migration peaks at Brooks River in July, um, and then in August, Oh, sorry, Felicia, we lost you for a little bit. Um, we lost you at in August. Well, we'll get you back in just a moment here, uh, Felicia. It, looks, it sounds like the internet is being a little rough on your end. Last week it was me, uh, so I'm glad I'm not the only one in that, in that situation. But yeah, Felicia was mentioning how in August, uh, bears are able to, uh, and salmon are, are spreading out throughout the watershed and starting to spawn in different parts of the watershed. So it's common for many bears. In fact, most bears of Brooks River will disappear from um, the Brooks River area to fish at different streams. And on this image, this Google Earth image, I just wanted to highlight a couple of options for them. Uh, so Brooks Falls right in the sort of towards the center of the image. Um, but uh, above and below that, a couple of other creeks where bears will go uh, in August to fish. Neither one of those places, neither Dumplin' Creek or Up a Tree Creek are official place names. So you're not going to find it on any map. They're just sort of nicknames for uh, those locations. Uh, and let's look uh, more specifically at Dumplin' Creek. Uh, so this is a, 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 a picture I took out of an airplane flying over there. This is a, a picture from April of a few years ago. Uh, so you notice that there's not really, you know, green grass or anything in the image. So this isn't from... Um, recent times. This is from April in 2016. Dumpling Creek snaking through the forest and emptying into uh, Knack Knack Lake itself. Uh, Felicia, I don't know if you're back or not, um, but you were in that vicinity um, last month and were able to take this video. What did you uh, see there? Uh, yeah, if I am back, um, this is my video from yes. mid-August. Um, and as you can see, there are hundreds of salmon going up this little um, about three or four feet wide. It's not very, very wide. And um, if a little further left of the frame, there were salmon carcasses. Um, the patch of grass that's right in the middle next to this tree was nice and bedded down. So even though I didn't see any bears um, in this area, there was lots of evidence that a bear has been eating good at this spot here. That, that stream is, is not very big. I mean, it's only a few feet wide. It's probably mm -hmm. in most places much less than a foot deep and um i was in that vicinity you know a couple of times and and uh, this is not far up the stream but i took this picture of a salmon in the stream you know maybe like you know 75 or 100 feet upstream of the lake itself and this is only in a few inches of water so for a bear it's easy pickings in these various locations uh, Brooks mm -hmm. River is like, you know, such a, an important place for bears to fish throughout the summer. In midsummer, it's really not the only place. So when bears are, you know, not here at Brooks River, I think, you know, when we're wondering about Otis, what he's been doing, is he doing all right and things like that, he, he has other options available to him. Mm -hmm. And there are so many of these little ones. These are just a few that we've seen. Yeah, dozens and dozens of salmon streams throughout the area. So um, Brooks River is uh, perhaps the last place in the area, though, where they can fish. It's it's really kind of like the first, and it's the last place um, that they can fish. As we cut to our Cats Riverview camera in that live footage, um, mom out in the lake still with her two cubs, and she is diving out there, Felicia. So you were mentioning diving before. Uh, not many um, bears will dive. One of the bears that does that is number 94. And um, she also has two cubs this year. So I think it's probably a pretty good indication that's maybe the family that we're looking out in the river mouth. And then a younger bear sitting in the foreground, uh, just um, considering its options.
think I lost you for a riff. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Felicia. I think you're you're breaking up just a little bit again. But uh, yeah, yeah, number ninety four out there um, in the lake with her with her two cubs, and then um, this other bear just sort of like hanging around, thinking about what it what it wants to do. Uh, I, th you know, we often see uh, mothers, of course, bringing their cubs here in early summer and in late summer. And once those families break up and the cubs separate from mom and become independent bears, a lot of times those young independent bears will come back to Brooks River. And we've been seeing that um, happening throughout the history of bear cam and, and prior uh, prior to that, somebody, if I can bring up a another one of our audience questions, um, somebody was wondering about sort of like the dynamic between mother bears and their cubs, uh, because sometimes we'll see mother bears become somewhat aggressive towards their recently separated cubs, almost like they wanna reinforce uh, family separation. We've seen that on the cameras this summer, we've seen it on the cameras in the past. Uh, so somebody wrote in asking, at what age do mother bears not rebuke their kids? When are they able to be in the same vicinity and not run them away? That, I don't know if there's uh, an exact age where maybe mm -hmm. that happens. It just might depend on the mother's tolerance, uh, food availability, for instance, uh, things things of that. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's the same thing. Um, I think it depends on the mom. I think it depends on how well, you know, the kid has, you know, accepted the separation. Um, you know, I, I feel like if it was within the first year of the separation, this is like a, you know, three and a half year old sub adult, um, mom's probably going to keep reinforcing that separation. But I mean, once the bears are like adults, um, and this is like an adult next to mom now, then yeah, they're fully independent on their own. Yeah, we talk about how devoted mother bears are to their cubs. And that is uh, certainly true. Um, mother bears are fierce. They're heroic in their efforts to to raise their offspring and keep them safe. But once family separation happens, it's sort of like it. It's not like uh, we you know we haven't really seen a lot of evidence that mother bears will cut their kids any breaks. It seems like at, at most they <laughs> they merely tolerate their presence. Uh, I I don't think I've ever witnessed like a, a like a happy family reunion between a mother bear and a former offspring where they sort of like nuzzle um, and playfully jaw with one another. Or anything like that. We've seen siblings do it, mm -hmm. um, but never like a mother uh, with a with a former cub. I don't, um, at least within my experience, I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen it either. It's a nice story, you know. It's something that we definitely would love to see. Um, you know, oh yeah, I remember you're my kid and like a cute little reunion. Um, but uh, from in my in my experience, like. No, um, once mom is done, mom is done. You're an adult now. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be my my impression as well. But bears surprise us all the time. So that's one of the great things about mm -hmm. watching the webcams is that we get to have this really rich experience where, you know, our, our, our bear watching and wildlife watching experience and our ability to, to know these animals on an individual level uh, extends across seasons and years. So we get to see a lot of unique behavior from these individual bears. So what I say is like the average doesn't necessarily mean that bears are going to do those things all of the time. Uh, so there are many exceptions to a lot of the rules that we end up talking about. And I think, uh, you know, for um, a mother bear that is very fierce when she's defending her cubs and has a reputation of that is number 128 Grazer. And I'm going to pull up a clip from uh, just like two days ago or something like that where Grazer was hanging out uh, near the bridge, near the Cats Riverview camera. So the camera we were just watching uh, live footage from, she's just hanging out. And, and it, this summer, uh, or early in the summer, she separated from her cubs. And she had uh, shown uh, the, the tendency to enforce that separation. We have seen examples of that. But in this clip, Felicia, we see one of her former cubs, now three and a half years old as an independent pair, just sort of walking by. They know each other. <laughs> they they see each other. They saw each other there. Um, but Grazer, you know, in this situation decided, you know what, I, I'm just going to ignore you, kid. And kid is like, you know what, mom, I can do it on my own now. I don't need you anymore.
But I think Felicia's audio broke up uh, again. Where we'll be um, looking to to get her back in, in just a moment. Uh, but um, you know, when we're we're looking at live footage again of this family out in the lake right now, so great views of this family doing their thing. Uh, there was another another question that that came up. Uh, let's see if I can find it. It had to do with families. Anyway, maybe I'll find it later. Let's uh, check out uh, what the other what what the bears are doing otherwise. So back up at Brooks Falls, it said there we don't want to ignore you know the activity there. Still Otis uh, sitting on the far side patiently. Another bear um, standing uh, kind of closer to the camera, uh, facing away from us. These are both um, you know uh, adult males, right? When you're looking to identify it adult males versus adult females it can be difficult at times you can look for the important parts so if you want to look for like things like genitalia you can sometimes see that in adult males easier than females uh, but if you can't see those things you can also look for them to to pee essentially look for them to urinate male will pee straight down doing his hind legs female the urine stream is out behind her and then also there's other physical differences males are just larger overall when they're fully grown than females because females have to def uh, devote so much energy into raising their cubs so they don't have as much energy to put into to growing their body mass and their body frame and then also you can look for males that uh, they tend to have just like big thick necks especially at this time of the year uh, compared to the females so those are a couple of the physical traits that help you to tell males and females apart Speaking of salmon, we were talking about salmon earlier. So we do have a Riffles camera live today. And um, there is a, a pair of spawning salmon right on the riverbank. So great view of those. Look up towards the uh, upper right-hand corner. You see a pair of bright red salmon there. Those are sockeye salmon. The majority of the salmon that spawn in Brooks River are sockeye salmon. Uh, and in the, this time of the year, their bodies are bright red. They have uh, prominent humps on them and they have green heads and big hooked jaws. The jaws themselves are useful for the salmon to defend um, spawning sites. If you're a female or if you're a male, it's useful for you to other males who might want access um, to that reproductive opportunity. So there's a lot of competition that goes on between males and females in the river. Uh, males will compete with other males for access to females who are about to lay her eggs. And then females compete with other females to, uh, to gain access to the most productive nesting sites in the river itself. And from the falls downstream, and again, this is only about 100 yards downstream of Brooks Falls. So uh, it, it, this is great spawning habitat, perfect for salmon, cold water, clear water, high oxygenated water. There's, um, it's hard to see on the webcams because of often the glare coming off of the water itself. But on a day where the sun is shining bright, there's no clouds in the sky and the sun is behind the camera, you might be able to look into the water and see um, dozens of pairs of salmon spawning downstream of Brooks Falls. Sorry, Felicia, I can hear a couple of syllables from you now and then, but I can't hear what you're saying, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry, Felicia, you've been um, breaking up, so we haven't been able to hear, um, you know, much of of what you've been saying. But yeah, uh, I think you've been admiring, you know, the salmon in the river as much as we have uh, through. Uh, on the webcams, of course, you're there in person, so I think it's easier for you to see sort of like the. Uh... All 
Sorry, I think my internet froze as well <laughs> for uh, for just a moment. But um, yeah, it's hard it's hard to really get a perspective on like the sheer amount of fish that are in the river uh, from the webcams itself. But the whole river right now is is full of salmon. So bears maybe if they didn't have a lot of opportunities to gain body mass early in the summer, um, have a, a time right now to make up for those missed opportunities and and get fat before winter hibernation, for, which for them is coming up for most of these bears generally in November. That's when they are going to enter, enter their dens. And if you're just joining us, thanks for tuning in. Uh, my name is Mike Fitz with explore.org. Uh, my co-host today is Katmai National Park Ranger Felicia Jimenez. Felicia's having a little bit of issues with a, a wonky internet connection, which happens at Brooks Camp. Again, this is a very remote area, but she's at the river. She's able to uh, have a really great perspective on the bears being on the ground uh, there. So hopefully we'll get her back in just a moment. Camera, camera operator from the lower river right now on our river watch camera is looking at uh, number 435 Holly. So this is uh, an older bear at Brooks River. She is an experienced uh, mother, although she does not have cubs this year, but she has had several litters in her lifetime. She was first identified somewhere around like 2002 or three or something like that. So she's an older bear. She's in her 20s right now, but a very successful bear. Not only has uh, successfully weaned a lot of offspring, uh, but she has also, you know, she has this, uh, what I like to call just this vast experience, this vast knowledge of where bears go, or excuse me, where salmon go, where she can catch salmon, scavenge salmon at this time of the year. Sometimes she'll use Brooks Falls, but, you know, at this time of the year, she's kind of a lower river bear. So she's almost exclusively found in this area. And her home range really during the month of September is not very large. It may extend basically from the riffles area downstream to the river mouth and in that that distance itself is maybe only like uh three quarters of a mile uh so probably you know a little less than a kilometer uh you know in linear length as the water flows so holly experienced bear it's really interesting to watch how the experienced bears carry themselves versus uh, the younger bears, the subadults, which are just still trying to figure things out on their own. You recognize Holly, she has blonde ears, kind of a blonde fur coat uh, for this time of the year. Uh, not unlike uh, number 128 or clip of uh, earlier. So sometimes they can be um, confused at a distance. Um, Holly, I think, tends to have a little bit of a darker face than uh, 128, but they're both both very fat females at this time of the year. Fat is such a, a, a vital type of body tissue for them because they needed to survive winter hibernation, of course. When they're in hibernation, they don't eat, they don't drink, they don't urinate, they don't defecate. They're surviving on their, on their fat reserves during that time. But mother bears, uh, like could be Holly coming up this winter, uh, you know, she uh, will give birth in the den. If she's conceived, uh, she successfully, um, you know, reproduced earlier in the year. Right now, she might just have um, some fertilized what are called blastocysts floating around um, in her reproductive tract. Uh, those blastocysts, they don't uh, implant in her uterus until she goes into hibernation. And the, the bear's body unconsciously determines whether the bear is healthy enough to carry essentially the pregnancy to term. Um, and the more body fat that a female has, the more likely that is to happen. So, um, you know, we could see bears like Holly or Grazer, who I showed a clip of earlier, coming back next year with some cups. I do like watching these younger bears, or excuse me, these um, these older bears fish in the low, low, lower river. They are just so meticulous in their habits. And hey, Felicia, it sounds like we got you back. So um, welcome back to the broadcast. We've been uh, just uh, looking at uh, and enjoying 435 Holly as she snorkels upstream. 
oh yay okay i think i'm back <laughs> <laughs> loud and clear oh, she looks so good <laughs> and uh you know these two there's another bear upstream of her holly is a very tolerant female from what i've seen uh sometimes the camera though can give us a bit of a forced perspective so these bears like aren't right on top of one another like uh, it might appear in that image but overall uh, felicia holly is one of those bears that i would consider to be quite tolerant of of other bears maybe one of the most tolerant bears at the river currently yeah um and i mean even from like what i've seen she just seems pretty chill i know that has not always been the case for her um maybe like in her old age she's getting a little bit more tolerant <laughs> Bears, they do change their habits uh, as as they grow and as they age. They are very habitual, so they will come back to the same places that they've experienced. Uh, you know, good feeding opportunities in the past. They'll do that over and over and over again. Like Otis, he's been using Brooks River every year of his adult life. Um, so Holly, same thing. Uh, but they will they will change their tolerance for each other depending on the familiarity.
Hey there fans, I am not Mike or Felicia. It does appear as if both of their feeds have disconnected. Internet is tricky that way sometimes. Um, hopefully they'll find a way to log back in and talk to us. Um, however, if they don't, um, we'll just look at some pretty views of bears in the meantime. Um, and uh and and go from there um i will uh chime back in if i hear anything from them um and uh otherwise uh enjoy the views from the falls i might click around to some other cameras to give you guys a tour around the river um i'm not a bear expert <laughs> i'm more of an expert in live cameras so uh i won't be the best person to step in for a play-by-play -play. um but I can, uh, I can, I can give us a nice tour around the river. Okay, I think I do have an update. It appears as if Starlink is down, and although Mike and Felicia are in two very disparate locations, uh, he's in Maine, she's in Katmai, they are both on Starlink. Um, all of our cameras that are on Starlink are currently offline right now, so uh, it doesn't sound like either of them will be back with us. We have about 10 minutes left in this play-by-play, so I'm uh, watching the YouTube chat right now. Um, let me know if you guys would like me to leave it running. I can maybe answer some live cam questions for you guys. Or um, we can cut it out early and uh, we will see you guys tomorrow, uh, provided uh, Starlink returns <laughs> on its own. Um, let me know what you guys think.
um, we have another live chat tomorrow, 4 p.m. on this channel, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. We have another play-by-play -play on Thursday as well, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. So tune in as Mike likes to say, same bear time, same bear place. <laughs> um, I'm Candace with Explore.org, and as we like to say here, never.